From the Church's Year of Grace by Pius Parsh. You can read more about the Great Feast of the Church by purchasing Beretta Books' reprint of Pius Parsh's The Church's Year of Grace. You can find this and many other fine Catholic books, sacramentals, vestments, and more from BerettaBooks.com. The Most Sacred Heart of Jesus One of the soldiers opened his side, and there flowed out blood and water. Matins of our feast contain a history of the devotion to the Sacred Heart and of the feast's origin. Already in ancient times, the open side of Jesus was given mystical connotations by the fathers and doctors of the church. The blood and water were interpreted as symbolizing the church, existing by virtue of the waters of baptism and the blood of the Eucharist. The cult of the wound in the sacred side received no notable impetus during the Middle Ages through the devotion to the heart of Christ as the fount of divine human love, a devotion fostered and furthered by St. Bernard, St. Gertrude, and St. Mechtilde. Modern devotion to the heart of Jesus dates to the time of St. John Eudes, who is usually considered its originator, who died in 1680, and to the revelations granted to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, who died in 1690. In three wondrous revelations, the significance of devotion to the Sacred Heart was communicated to this humble virgin. As a result of her spiritual experiences, a new feast was instituted on the Friday after the octave of Corpus Christi, with emphasis on atonement. The feast was approved for specified dioceses by Clement the Thirteenth in 1765, and extended to the whole Church by Pius IX in 1856. In 1889, Pope Leo XIII elevated it to the rank of first class, and through an encyclical letter in 1899, dedicated the whole Catholic world to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In 1928, the feast was favored with an octave of the Third Order by Pope Pius XI, and thereby enjoyed a rank equal to Christmas and Ascension. At the same time, its office was completely recast. The previous Sacred Heart office lacked unity being a synthesis of ready texts. In part it was Eucharistic, and in part an office on the Passion. Wishing an original unified office, Pius XI appointed a commission of theologians and himself supervised their work. As a theme for the office, Christ's words to St. Margaret Mary were chosen. Behold the heart which has loved men so greatly, but which has been given so little love in return. It became a feast of atonement for human ingratitude toward God a feast in praise of the peaceful triumph of Christ's boundless love. A final modification in the status of the feast occurred in 1955, when as part of the calendar reform, the octave was abolished. But the office of the Sacred Heart is still said on the Sunday after the feast. The Sacred Heart Mysticism of St. Bonaventure Quote, Beloved brethren, since it has been ordained by a merciful providence that the Church should be formed from the side of the crucified Christ, and that the words of the scripture be fulfilled, they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. A soldier armed with a lance opened the sacred breast. The blood mingled with water, which was shed from that pierced side, was the price of our salvation. Flowing from the hidden fount of the sacred heart, it gave to the sacraments their power of conferring the life of grace, and to those already living in Christ a drought of the living fount gushing forth unto life eternal. Arise, therefore, O soul, friendly to Christ. Cease not your vigil. Bring close your lips, that you may draw waters from out of the Savior's fountain. O how good and how pleasant it is to dwell in this most sacred heart. Your heart, dearest Jesus, is the great treasure, the precious jewel, which we will find in the dug field of your sacred body. Who is there who would throw away this jewel? Rather would I throw away all my own jewels, my thoughts and my affections, and cast my cares upon your sacred heart, which will nourish me without fail. I beg of you, sweet Jesus my God, place my prayer among those that you will answer. Draw me wholly into your heart, for unto this end your side was pierced, that an entrance would lie open to us. Unto this end your heart was wounded, that detached from worldly tumult, we would be able to dwell in it. But above all, your heart was wounded, so that a visible scar would enable us to see the invisible wound of your love. For how could the ardor of your love be better shown than by this, that not only your body, but even your very heart was pierced to the lance? Truly the wounds of the flesh showed forth the wounds of the spirit. Who is there who would not love one so loving? My dearly beloved, let us pray that the sacred heart may deign to wound our hearts still so hard, still so impenitent, 
and bind it with the sweet bonds of his love. 